Hello guys, Kako ste Bulgaria. Uh, thing is, uh, I'm from Croatia, so I can probably understand some Bulgarian, but not good enough to present, so I will do this in English. If there's anything you don't understand or you don't like, raise your hand, we can discuss it. Before I introduce myself, I'll briefly introduce uh, what I'm going to talk about in the next 20 minutes. Basically, I'll give you an introduction of who I am and why I'm here. We'll talk about uh, the OpenStack paradox, which you're wondering what it is now. Then uh, we'll talk about my journey with OpenStack, which is something that should probably interest you if you are interested in OpenStack. Uh, we'll talk about Ansible. So far, maybe someone knows what Ansible is. If not, we'll discuss that as well. Another buzzword called DevOps and some questions from you. If there's anything not clear, you want to ask something, don't wait for the end, Press raise your hand. So let's begin by uh, who am I here? I'm a RecSpace employee. I'm a lead engineer. I'm representing uh, the first managed hosting company in the world. Uh, we have about 300,000 uh, customers in two thirds of the countries in, in the world. Uh, we're growing nine data centers, 6,000 employees, of which 1,000 are based in UK London, which is basically my home site. So I've come from uh, London here yesterday. Uh, that's briefly about us. Uh, we, among other things, are one of the uh, leading companies, one of the founders of OpenStack. So this is more than just a technology that we're using. It's, this is also a homegrown product. Getting a little more, more personal now. Actually, I have the clicker, right? Getting a little more personal now, so like I said, I work for Rexpace. My title is Lead Linux Engineer, which means that several high-profile customers work directly with me on improving their technological portfolio. Before Rexpace, I worked for Intel Corporation. Have you heard of it? It's a small startup with 100,000 employees. Uh, I was, like uh, Simon mentioned earlier, architecting solutions for the chip design. I have a bunch of books, some techn technology-related, some not technology-related. I have patents and many other interesting and less interesting things. I like to drive cars fast, so if there are any nice race, race tracks in Bulgaria, we can discuss that after the session. And the most important thing for today is that I am an OpenStack newbie. Pretty much until a couple of months ago, I didn't do anything with OpenStack. And then this opportunity came up, and I said, let's see what OpenStack can do. And I'm going to give you a presentation from a perspective of someone who is very technically minded, but has never used OpenStack. So I'm not an insider guy. I'm not coming here with 15 years of OpenStack, and I have forgotten what it is to press the first enter and get the, the technology running. So hopefully, if you are new to, let's see, who has never used OpenStack? Very good. Who has very limited or beginner experience with OpenStack? Fine. Now, who here is really an OpenStack expert and knows their way around completely? One, two, three. Okay, so three guys will probably be bored. The rest of you may enjoy it. So this is the actual uh, the message. So uh, just one second. Not clicking. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. The OpenStack paradox. Does anyone know what this means? Does anyone have an idea what an open stack, what the open stack paradox is? Come on, just one guess, one guess. No, no one. Just one guess, one small guess. Never mind. So it goes like this: to be able to use to use open stack, you need to be able to use open stack. Nietzsche said that, and I uh, rephrased it. It's basically a chicken and an egg problem. This technology is so complex that to be able to use it, you need to know how to use OpenStack. But how will you know OpenStack if it's so complex to learn? So that's the problem probably you are facing and I faced when I started playing with uh, OpenStack. So let me give you a little more details of what I had to do when I started with this game. The first problem with the paradox is OpenStack is an infrastructure technology. It's designed to be a provider and an enabler for you to do something else, which means your business. But the problem is, OpenStack is down there. You want to work up here. You want to do your business. You want to host your website. You want to do your uh, payment gateway. You want to do your little something. Or can you give me your business cases, your use cases in general, your, what you're doing? One or two examples? No? 
Sorry? Application service services something else? Billing applications. Excellent. All of these have nothing to do with OpenStack per se. OpenStack is a technology that will enable you to do all this. But to get OpenStack running, you need all this space, and it's a complex space. So uh, just to give you a highlight of what OpenStack looks like, this is an official document from a OpenStack documentation. It's a nice little uh, diagram. It shows all the little interdependencies that OpenStack has in how you get the infrastructure running. It has several different components. It has a different component for computing. It has a different component for storage. It has a different component for user management, a different component for networking. All of these are very difficult to set up. You need good virtualization knowledge. You need good networking knowledge. You need to understand Linux containers. You need to understand uh, firewalls. You need to understand storage. All of these pieces just to get your first uh, Nova command running. Just before you can press enter and something comes out, you need to ma master all of this. It's a pretty difficult task. It can take a very long time. And uh, if you're not really sure what you need to do, you're faced with a big, big challenge. Should you do it in the first place? So here's a question. Should you use OpenStack? It's a serious question. You heard about it. You may think about using it. It sounds interesting. It sounds useful. It's the future. But what are you going to do? Are you going to be a provider? Or are you going to be a consumer? Are you going to be Rackspace? Or are you going to be a customer of Rackspace? <coughs> so what are you going to do? That's the first question. Maybe OpenStack is not the best solution for you. The second question is, uh, how are you going to use it? Do you have a very large install base? Or are you going to have an application that changes once every six months? Are you going to provision thousands of virtual machines? Or are you going to have two static web servers? How big is your business? Are we talking about 10 developers? A $1 million of revenue? Are we talking 100 developers? Are we talking about billions? It's also a very important question. Just to get OpenStack running, you need quite a few uh, virtual machines. You need storage, you need switches, firewalls. The initial setup is not trivial. If you want to get it running properly, you already have to have an infrastructure that's pretty big. So what are you going to build on top of it? If you're going to have 20 virtual machines, your OpenStack, and 20 virtual machines, your service, probably not a good ratio. You probably want a different ratio. You want thousands of virtual machines, tens of thousands of virtual machines. And then what about your expertise? Do you have OpenStack uh, experts in your company? If not, will you let your system administrator spend three months learning now? Will you dedicate engineering time, Python development, uh, working with the community? All of these just before you even decide if your, your application is going to run. You have to decide on this. And even though OpenStack is a very exotic buzzword today, and it's a useful technology, it may not necessarily fit what you need to do. That's important to remember. So now that I've unsold OpenStack, let me tell you a little bit what I had to do. So I have intuition for technology without bragging. I said, let's try to use this as I would use KVM or Zen or VMware or any other technology. What I normally do is open a command line and start hitting commands playing. Something happens in the end. You get a, a, an output. So I started playing with OpenStack commands. Some of you may actually have seen some of these commands, some of these may, actu may have actually used some of these to do something. What happened was, after many, many hours of difficult hands-on work, I pretty much f gave up. It was so difficult to get the basic stuff running that uh, especially, especially since I already have intuition, I can get containers running in five minutes. I can get KVM running in five minutes. Zen, five minutes. No problem. Even without reading the documentation. Here, I actually had to stop, go back, spend several good hours reading books and uh, documentation before I could go back and do what I had to do. Eventually, I did get to this point. Now, has anyone ever seen these commands on their, in their own terminal? 
let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a small percentage of you have had the luck of getting these commands running. So basically, you manage to see what flavors are available. You manage to set up small basic firewall rules for SSH and uh, ping, basically. You created a key so you can connect to your virtual machines. And you, you actually got underway. If you get to this point, you can actually do these last four commands. You're good. You've done a very good job. My question is, how long did it take for you to get there? Hours. Hours. Who said that? And you have no experience? No. Okay, good. Yeah, it's an hour for cake that take two days. Two days, okay. What about you? Well, we spent a couple of months before we actually... Okay, two months. <laughs> two days, two months. No, I... Okay, what else? Several months. Several I months. Five years, ago. five years, several months ago. Good, good. Other experiences? Well, we have one genius, two oh, days. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so far, months. Anyone else can beat months, weeks? Couple of weeks. Very good. But has anyone managed to get this running in a day, one day? <laughs> one day? Okay, you can. <laughs> All right. We'll get there. <laughs> So my question is, if you want to master OpenStack in a sensible manner, how much time do I have, by the way? OK. No problem. If you want to master OpenStack in a simple way that is oriented for new OpenStack users without spending months and months of hard, hard work, so what are we going to do? So the answer is in the next slide. And it is Ansible. I'll give you two seconds to appreciate my joke. Good. Has anyone seen exhibits on MTV, Pimp My Ride? Can you raise your hands in solidarity? OK. Those of you who have seen it, it may be funny. Those of you who have not, you're missing a lovely joke. But basically, we're going to talk about Ansible. And my question is, what is Ansible? Yes, please. It's a configuration management tool. Very good. But it's different from Puppet and Chef. And it is different from Puppet and Chef. That's fine. So before, let's align. Does anyone know what, not know what configuration management means? Don't be shy. It's perfectly fine. Good. Has anyone not heard of Ansible before? No, not, heard. not heard. We're doing the not, not. Kind of double negative. OK. A few of you. So basically, it's a configuration management tool. What it means is it's a tool that deploys other software on target hosts based on policies. Basically, you have rules, if, then, and you deploy certain things. You may say, if it's a web server, deploy Apache. Do it on a 1,000 hosts. You do it with a configuration management tool, like Puppet, like Chef, and in our case, like Ansible. How Ansible works is it uses SSH, remotely connects to, uh, to its hosts that it controls. But you can also use the pull mechanism instead of push. And what it does is it uses a playbook language written in YAML to uh, parse its business logic. So basically, what you have is you define a set of rules. You define what you want to do. And then Ansible will run it on all it's uh, mo monitored, controlled host. That's it in a nutshell. What it looks like is something like this. You have text files, which are called playbooks. You can call them recipes. You can call them packages, depending on what configuration management tool you've used. And you have a set of directives, which define what you want to do. Just as a quick example, for hosts that are web servers, you define that the web port will be 80. The user will be root. We define tasks of copying the configuration file to a certain destination. And then we have a handler, which is basically a trigger. On action, do something else. And our action is, if we copy file, we'll restart the service. Makes sense, right? It's the things you do on command line. We just do it in an automated manner, scripted manner. And we deploy it on hundreds, thousands of hosts. We use 
in this case, playbooks, Ansible. You can do use anything you want. You can write your own configuration language. I'll give you 31, 31 seconds to appreciate my second joke. Okay, who has not seen Zoolander? Okay, it's good. It's a good movie, you should. It's lovely. So basically, I've told you oh, Ansible, but what about OpenStack? How does it connect to Ansible? And the answer is OpenStack Ansible deployment, OSAD. What it is, it's now a community-driven uh, project which started as a RecSpace initiative. It's making OpenStack accessible to normal people. Making OpenStack accessible to community. You go on GitHub, you grab the actual files, to get running, without going into too many details, you just need two commands. Can you see the little print where it says bash and then OpenStack? That's all you need before understanding anything to get OpenStack deployed in a virtual machine or a physical server, how, however you like, using this framework. What happens is the script will download a long set of Ansible playbooks. You'll run the master playbook called Set Up Everything. And that one will really set up everything for you. It will set up the compute piece, the networking piece, all the networking bridges, all the firewall rules, everything. 45 minutes to two hours, you can have a workable OpenStack uh, infrastructure in place. You will not understand it. You will not be able to change it. But you don't need to worry about this because what you want to do is business. You are not an inf infrastructure provider. You're a business consumer. So this is how you do it. It's based on uh, Ubuntu with uh, LXC, by the way. And you can even deploy this in a virtual machine if you really want to stretch it and test what it gives. But go home. Yes, please. It spawns about, I think, 39 containers on your machine. And each of these containers plays a different piece in the open uh, stack infrastructure. So you'll have your uh, identity manager. You'll have your uh, storage manager, you'll have your compute manager, and all the other pieces. This is just the OpenStack infrastructure. We still haven't done any commands, but you don't need to do all the ugly stuff that I've talked about earlier. Am I on time? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Excellent. So, the idea behind OSAD is, like I mentioned earlier, you don't want to build op OpenStack, you want to use OpenStack. So you avoid the whole difficult piece that stops everyone from using OpenStack. The idea of Ansible configuration management is good business practice. You don't want to do it manually. You don't want to give your system means each one will do it how they want. You do it in a uh, modular way. You do it in a predictable way, repeatable way. So it's a kind of a business ideology how you work. And this is, the, this is one of the ways of doing it, configuration management. Then you have also help from the community to get things running. Now you may also say chicken and an egg. What about Ansible? How do you master Ansible? How do you use it? So here, I want to introduce another business prospect which is called, eh, which is called DevOps. Who has not heard about DevOps? And you may laugh at my joke meanwhile. It's good, it's good. So who has not heard of DevOps? One. DevOps is another buzzword, but what it actually means is development and operations. In other words, Instead of giving anyone control of the environment, you have a dedicated team who work in a very strict manner. They use version control, they use configuration management, and they are responsible for, de for deployment of software. DevOps is a change from one guy does all to a dedicated team so you can focus on your specific development, business, and whatnot. In RecSpace, without overselling it, art, we are trying internally as well as externally to promote the DevOps culture because it helps make things simpler and easier. Instead of everyone doing however they want, you do it in a central, uh, predictable way. Basically, what I've said so far is OpenStack is difficult. OpenStack is uh, tricky to deploy. It prevents people from using it. The technology is too difficult for its own good. But you can make it simpler using Ansible and the community OSAD project just to get running. You can go back after three months and playing with OpenStack, then you can start tweaking the compute side and everything, but the first step is business. Is OpenStack good for you? You can check. 
Today, no one can check OpenStack because it's too difficult. Questions, guys? Uh, yes, please. Uh, question. Yes. My suggestion is, going back to your business case, what are you trying to achieve? Ask yourself. And then, try first one tool, try the other. It doesn't take too much time. So you can actually spend a day testing, see which one works best for you. If you, for instance, have already Ansible development in-house, go with Ansible tools. Makes a quicker transition. If you don't want to use it and you are a chef guy, or you don't want to use Ubuntu, try something else. So start with the business drivers. What is your minimum requirement set for your company? CentOS, Red Hat, Ubuntu, SUSE, uh, Ansible, whatever. That will define the technology, not the other way around. Uh, yes. RDO? What do you mean by RDO? Maybe I'm missing something? Remember, I'm a newbie. I think the big difference is that it's used by Red Hat. <laughs> if you look at the technology without giving you any uh, drama, if you look at the technology today, everyone's trying to be the best guy and show you the best technology. So you will have OpenStack solutions coming and going like mushrooms in the next few years. Which one is the best? I really don't know today. I think the best one will be the one that provides most standard. It's like HTML and like programming languages, the world will eventually narrow down into one, two chief technologies. Which ones? I don't know. Bets are Red Hat is not a good, is a good bet because they usually do sensible work. But at this point, I really can't tell you. It is the same. It's like asking what's the difference between Ubuntu and CentOS. There's no difference, but yeah. Yes, please. So YAML, in my opinion, YAML is not difficult. It's very logical, but I can't, it, there's no magic. If you need to invest 10 hours of energy into learning something, you need to invest 10, 10 hours of energy. There's no magic. If anyone comes on board and says five minutes and done, they're lying. The only difference is where you invest the energy. Do you invest energy in trying to figure out uh, Linux containers manually, or do you hide it behind the configuration management tool? The difference is that if you use configuration management tool, you build additional knowledge for future deployments. If you just do it manually once with OpenStack, if you need to do something else, you need to do it again. That's it. But there's no, there's no working around it. You need to invest energy and learning. Just where? Okay, so uh, Ansible documentation is pretty good. Go online and check it, I think. I've, I've used it, it's pretty okay. If you have a basic sysadmin Linux knowledge, you'll be fine. Okay. It is, it is, it is. You mean specifically OSAD? Okay, not bad, but much better than hands-on raw OpenStack. So it's it's a prog it's progress to some extent. Two more questions. Yes, please. There's no advantage. It's like asking you what's the advantage of Ubuntu over Red Hat. There is none. It's only if you need to use it for business purposes or if you don't need to use it. If you want OpenStack and it's the only one, probably your choice. But there's really no technological advantage. It's very specific use cases. So again, I'm asking you, what do you want to achieve? Yes, 
Okay. It's perfectly fine. There's no problem. But what if your business needs to use Ansible? You will use Ansible. One last question, please. Yes, please. Yes, you can. The default one is single host. I suggest you deploy single host, see how it works, and then you start playing with the playbooks and making changes. There's one configura large configuration that defines how it's done. You can do multiple hosts. What you basically do is deploy part, comment out certain pieces on one host, and uncomment certain pieces on the other, and then you'll have uh, two of them running. Just make sure you use the same keys and same secrets so they can actually communicate. I guess I'm done. Uh, out of time, right? Uh, good. So basically, if you have any other questions, this is my email. Take a moment to write it down. Feel free to ask me anything. I'll refer you to if there's a need to anyone that I know, my colleagues who are much better at OpenStack than I am, because I'm bluffing here. And if you have questions about cars, cars, then yes, please. You're raising your hand very hard. Yes. I think it would probably be Silverstone, but that's cliche. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry? I haven't been there. I, I'm still young, I have time. Okay. <laughs> cool. You send me an email, and it's going to be good. Thank you very much, guys.